Welcome to this video presentation sponsored by Odie Tug. We hope you enjoy Hi, it. Hi, my name is John King. I'm a director at Odie Tug. And I'm here today with Bryn Llewellyn, product manager in the Oracle Database Group. And he's going to talk to us today a little bit about some new features. In the past, you might have associated him apparently with PL SQL. There's some new features in the database. Tom Kite was very excited about Tom identified a killer feature for this version of the database being edition-based redefinition. This is a, a new technology that I know Oracle and Bryn are very excited about, so I'd like to ask Bryn to tell us a little more. Thanks for giving me the chance to talk about it. By the way, I can talk uninterrupted for two hours at least, but I guess I should be briefer here. So the first thing, doubtless, you're going to want to know is what on earth is it for? Yes. What goal does it let customers meet? And it lets them meet a goal in the general space of high availability. And this goal, unlike the other goals, has been unsolved until Oracle Database 11G release 2. And in fact, other vendors still leave it unsolved. And the goal is to be able to change those database objects who are the back end of your application, the one that you, the customer, created for your application purpose, while yet not interrupting the availability of the application. And we call that goal online application upgrade. Let me see if I got this straight. You mean that I can have some users using the old version of the software and other people using the new version and it works just fine? Yes, you can. It doesn't come implicitly. It comes by virtue of those people in the development shop who ordinarily anyway write the upgrade scripts writing them in a special way to take advantage of this new technology. But providing they learn about it and then write their scripts in the proper fashion, yes indeed they can deliver to their users continuous availability. And that does include, as you mentioned, some people who are not ready yet to move to the new, still using the new, uh, still using the old, while at the same time those who are ready to use the new starting up on the new so that indeed old and new are concurrent use. So that's where the word addition comes in. Yes, addition is part of the jigsaw puzzle. It's called addition-based redefinition because it is exactly based on this notion of the addition. By the way, the redefinition is only plain, in, plain English for redoing your DDL. In other words, changing existing objects. Um, if we're going to address this problem, then we need to satisfy some basic requirements, any technology that attempted to do this would have to do the same, we need somehow to be able to acknowledge the fact that there's data in the database, let's face it, that's why we have databases, yes. and that the data typically lives on over an upgrade. It would be a rather sad upgrade that threw away all the data and yes. gave you a brand new empty database, albeit with an exciting new UI. So the data is required to live on, but Again, if we think about what happens in upgrades, it often happens that the data changes in some way. New things are capable of representation that didn't used to be represented, and for typically internal reasons, the way some things are represented changes. And finally, because there's code in the database, and by code I mean views and PL SQL, the code knows about the structures, and if the ch structures change, then the code has to change too. So what we have to satisfy is the requirement that large amounts of data are in common between the old and the new. We have to nevertheless have a mechanism that allows differentiation so that the data looks different in the old and the new according to our requirement. And finally we have to, wait to, we have, to have a way to keep the old and the new code separate from each other. We need, in other words, a mechanism for the commonality of data, for the differentiation of data, and for the separation of code. Finally, by the way, we need um, some mechanism that will synchronize the data in the case that the new data is derived from the old new data. I think it might help us to have some concrete example before we talk too much more about this. And uh, a simple example is given by the HR schema that Oracle ships as one of its example schemas. Um, it has a table that everyone knows inside out called employees, and I'm sure everyone has looked at the content of that. Sure There's a can. column there called phone number, and maybe surprisingly, even in almost the year 2010, 
it shows um, phone numbers in a slightly asymmetrical way, so that people who live in the US have just the three-digit area code and then the number, while people who live outside of the US are listed here with the digits that you use in the US to get an international line followed by the country code, followed by the number. So let's imagine that the purpose of the present upgrade is to change the world so that all phone numbers, whether the people live in the US or not, are represented in two columns, the country code and the um, number itself. So we'll update the system to pretend that people are actually outside the US. We'll update the system so that everyone in the world is on an equal footing and everyone has a number given in the same way, country code and number. And clearly, if we're going to change that data representation, um, then we will need to change the code that manipulates it to keep step. Yes. And clearly, too, if some people are using the old system and others are using the new, then um, if people who make a change in the old, for example, insert a number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, that will have to appear in the new system as plus 1, blah, blah, blah. Like, like I said. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, then. So we have to then have a technology that satisfies those goals and the technology does so by these three constructs. The addition itself, that is a new phenomenon, brand new phenomenon in the database that allows two copies, two occurrences of, let's say, a view called scott.v to exist. They're both called scott.v, but yet they are separable in some way. They're separable because each is in a different edition. That's where the addition comes into the picture. Um, we have a table. The table is the thing which does, as it always did, hold the data itself. It's the storage vehicle. And um, what we want to do is make that data look different in the old edition and the new edition. And we do that by covering the table with a special kind of view called an additioning view. So the old edition would have an old occurrence of the additioning view. In this example, showing the old style phone number in one column while the new view, the new editioning view in the new edition on the same base table would not show that column, it would show two different columns added for the purpose of the exercise who have the country code and the number inside the country. So the data actually looks different to the two views used based on the views that they're using? Yes, the data looks different but each of the two views, old and new, are projecting out what's interesting to the respective editions from a common corpus of data in the table. Wow. And then finally, to keep the numbers in step, as people work in both old and new, we use triggers, triggers of a special kind. They're brand new too, they're called cross-edition triggers, and their purpose is to do the synchronization and to make it easy for the script writer to, to write the right script. They fire when you need them to fire. They fire according to whether the old application or the new application is in use. All right, I see. So now, if I'm a, a project leader, if we have additioning in place, what I can do is take a, a small number of users who need to work with the new system and experiment, make sure that it's working well, uh, make sure it's doing everything they need, at the same time not interrupting the lives of the people using the old system until we're absolutely certain that we want to cut over. Yes, exactly that. And of course, you're doing this on the live production system. We hope you enjoyed this video broadcast from Odytug. If you'd like to see more of the same, please come to Kaleidoscope 2010, the Wardman Park Marriott in Washington, D.C.